I had a uh, very severe uh, earache on left side two days back. Um, examination uh, of the ear was normal. Um, I took some analgesics and the next day while brushing I found out that a major part of my left lower molar tooth was missing. On consultation with a dentist uh, it was a caries teeth and uh, it has to be uh, extracted. And there was no pain in the teeth but I had an earache. And that was referred autalgia. And today's class is referred autalgia. Referred autalgia. This referred autalgia is very common in your clinical practice and also uh, it can be asked in exam. Discuss this referred autalgia under the headings of uh, definition, then significance, mechanism of action and about the individual nerve distribution. Okay, so what is the definition of referred autalgia? Referred autalgia is defined as pain in the ear not due to disease in the ear but disease in areas having same Dermatomal innervation. Dermatome. Okay. Dermatomes. Uh, pain in the ear, not due to disease in the ear, but disease in areas having same dermatomal innervation. Okay. And what is the significance of this? This uh, autalgia may be an early alert of some serious underlying problem. So, each case has to be carefully and individually evaluated. And uh, most often, the severity of symptom uh, will not correlate with the gravity of disease. That is the significance. This is only an external manifestation of some serious underlying pathology. So, it has to be carefully evaluated. And uh, why this happened? What is the mechanism of action? Mechanism of action, uh, the exact mechanism is a bit controversial but the accepted uh, mechanism is the convergence projection theory. What is that? It is the uh, convergence projection theory. Convergence and projection theory. That is the accepted one. What is that? Multiple nerves will converge onto a single um, shared neural pathway. That is true. Multiple uh, cranial nerves will converge towards a common shared pathway. So that what happened? The CNS is unable to uh, differentiate the original uh, stimulation. Okay. Actually it is a sensory error by the central nerve system. So that is convergence, that, that means so many uh, nerves are converging to a single neural pathway so that the site 2 projection cannot be clearly defined by the central nerve system. So that is the convergence projection theory which is the basis of this referred autalgia. This can happen in, not only in the ear but also happen that uh, example when there is a cardiac pain it will manifest as a pain of the left lower arm and also uh, you will feel the shoulder pain when there is an irritated lesion in the diaphragm. Okay, so these are all examples of this convergent conversion, conver, uh, convergence projection theory. Important part of this is the uh, uh, nerves involved in this referred autalgia. For, for that we have to know the innervation of ear. Uh, what is this? This is the, uh, which side is this? This is the right ear and this, this is the right tympanic membrane and surrounding that is the right external auditory canal. Okay, so if you want to draw that, this is the right tympanic membrane, you draw a tympanic membrane and then surrounding that you draw the external auditory canal. Okay, so the anterior part uh, is supplied by the auriculotemporal nerve which is a branch of trigeminal nerve. Okay, so mainly the tragus, then the crust of helix, uh, the andro, uh, mainly the anterior wall, anterior wall of the external auditory canal, 
the adjacent uh, tympanic membrane and the temporomandibular joint. Okay, so the in the pinna mainly the tragus, the crust of helix, and the anterior portion of the external auditory canal. The corresponding part that is the anterior most part of the tympanic membrane and the TM joint is supplied by the trigeminal through auricular temporal. Okay, so this is by the auricular temporal, right? And the part of uh, uh, pinna that is a uh, conga, congal cartilage, and also this uh, inner surface uh, of the tympanic membrane and the inner ear is supplied by the tenth nerve. Which branch? That is the Arnold's branch. So the tympanic branch of uh, vagus is called the Arnold. Arnold's nerve. Okay. So the inner ear, the inner surface of tympanic membrane, and the uh, conga is supplied by tenth nerve. And the inner uh, inner ear along with the inner surface of the uh, tympanic membrane is also supplied by the uh, Jacobson's nerve. That is a gross part, uh, tympanic branch of uh, glossopharyngeal is called the Jacobson's now. Jacobson. Okay, greater auricular and the lesser occipital through C2 and C3. Here comes it. It supplies the uh, skin in front and behind the ear and also the medial and the lateral aspect of the uh, pinna and the ear lobule, medial and the lateral uh, aspect skin of the pinna and the ear lobule and also the skin in front and behind the ear is supplied by C2 and C3 through greater auricular and lesser occipital. So and also a small part at the posterior superior part of the external auditory canal and the touch pain and temperature sensation on the uh, posterior auricular area is supplied by 7th nerve through the posterior auricular nerve. Right? So this is the uh, supply of uh, ear mainly the 5th uh, trigeminal through the auricular temporal then 9th uh, nerve through Jacobson's 10th through Arnold's nerve and uh, C2, C3 through greater auricular and lesser occipital and a small part uh, pain touch and temperature sensation by the Posterior auricular branch of vagus now. Is it clear? Now you know the supply, uh, sensory innervation of the uh, ear. Then what are the projections, sensory projections of the each, uh, each cranial now? Let us see that. Uh, so the most common sensory nerve supply leading to referred autalgia is trigeminal now. Remember that it is usually asked in uh, MCQs. So the most common sensory nerve pathway leading to referred autalgia is the trigeminal, fifth one. Right? This one, fifth. So I told the anterior part of the external auditory canal as well as the tragus and the corresponding part of tympanic membrane and the temporomandibular joint is supplied by the auricular temporal. And here it is the V2 and as well as the V3. That is both um, mainly by the mandibular and small part by the maxillary division of trigeminal. So uh, here it goes as a sensory innervation by the lingual, buccal and the inferior alveolar. Here, the lingual, buccal and the inferior alveolar. Right? So the anterior two-third of tongue, the inferior oral cavity, then the palate, the lower teeth, mandible, including the temporomandibular joint and the three major salivary glands. They are supplied by this lingual, buccal and inferior alveolar division of mainly the um, mandibular branch of uh, trigeminal nerve. And a small contribution at the andro-inferior part of the uh, septum as well as the sensory supply of the columella and the vestibule is also by the uh, branch of trigeminal. You understood that? So the anterior tutor of tongue, the inferior oral cavity, the palate, lower teeth, mandible, including the temporomandibular joint and all the 
major three salivary glands are supplied by the uh, trigeminal nerve. So, lesions in any one of this area can lead to a referred otalgia. Next, what about the seventh? The sensory supply of the small part in the posterior superior part of the external artery canal and the touch pain and temperature sensation on the posterior posterior area, skin over the uh, posterior uh, part of the uh, pinna and the post-auricular region is by the uh, seventh nerve. It's a branch of through a branch of posterior auricular nerve. Okay, so this part is by the posterior auricular nerve. And here you can see that the nasal mucosa, then the posterior ethmoid sinus, the spinoid sinus and soft palate. These green areas, right? Which are part? That is the nasal mucosa, then the posterior ethmoid, spinoid and the soft palate is by the greater uh, superficial petrosal nerve through median nerve. So the greater superficial petrosal nerve joins with the uh, deeper petrosal nerve forming the going to the pterygoid canal that is the median nerve and that part supplies this, this all areas. So that is the uh, connection of the preferred otology in case of uh, facial nerve, seventh. And another important thing which can be asked as uh, MCQ is the Hitzelberger sign. What is this Hitzelberger sign? It is hypostasia of the posterior meatal wall, which is seen in acoustic neuroma. Remember this. Okay? It's the Hitzelberger sign. Okay, don't forget that's usually asked as an examiner's choice, examiner friendly MCQ. Or very, uh, it's very commonly asked one. So, hypostasia of the posterior superior uh, part of the external auditory canal, which is seen in acoustic neuroma, uh, it is called the Hitzelberger sign. Okay, and so that is about the seventh nerve. And the ninth nerve of Jacobson's nerve, uh, that also has ninth here. Here I told you the inner rear and the inner surface of the membrane is by the uh, Jacobson's nerve. And what about this part here? See this. This much. Which are areas? That is the uh, posterior one third of tongue. Here, posterior one third of tongue. Then the tonsil, tonsillar bed, tonsillar pillars. Then the inferior uh, nasopharynx. Then the parapharyngeal and the retropharyngeal area. Right? So the posterior one third of tongue, tonsillar pillars, tonsillar bed, inferior nasopharynx and the Parapharyngeal and the retropharyngeal area. So, even a parapharyngeal abscess can cause a referred autogia. Along with the ninth nerve, one thing you have to remember is the Eagle syndrome. This is uh, usually asked in as short note uh, Eagle's syndrome, or uh, it is because of the elongated styloid process or a calcified stylohyoid ligament. The normal, what is the normal size of a styloid process? It is a, actually it is 1 inch or around 2.54 centimeters. If it is elongated or if there is stylohyoid ligament get calcified in some, um, some persons, it is normal in 4 percentage. Okay, 4 percent. Normally in a 4 percentage of persons, this styloid process is elongated or the stylohyoid ligament is calcified. Of that 4%, 4 percent, 4 percentage of persons will get a Eagle syndrome. So, of the 4 percentage of persons having uh, elongated styloid process, 4 percentage of them among them will get this uh, Eagle syndrome. That is, the patient will have, because of this elongated styloid process or a calcified stylohyoid ligament, this uh, patient will tell you. Uh, complains that I, one there will be a foreign body sensation in the throat or there will be a refer, pain in the ear that is because of the referred otalgia through the ninth nerve or there will be tinnitus or there will be dysphagia so the common complaints are foreign body sensation in the ear uh, sorry foreign body sensation in the throat or dysphagia tinnitus or earache why earache? Because this elongated styloid process will come and impinge on the here, 
bed of tonsil. So it will uh, irritate the glossopharyngeal nerve and it causes an earache. Okay, so uh, what is the treatment? So usually it will respond to uh, NSAID, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or local injection of steroids. If it is not responding to these medicines, go for styloidectomy through a trans uh, tonsillar approach. After doing a tonsillectomy, you uh, break the tip of the styloid process through the tonsillar bed. Superior laryngeal internal branch. Okay. So, what will be the supply of that? It supplies the supraglottic larynx. Right? One is supraglottic larynx and the uh, laryngeal and the lingual surface of uh, epiglottis. A small, come from, we can tell from uh, top. A small part of vellicula. Then the both surface, lingual as well as the laryngeal surface of epiglottis and the uh, supraglottic larynx and also the lower pharynx. Right? So, vellicula, the both surface of epiglottis then the supraglottic larynx and also the lower pharynx. This must part. Lower pharynx, supraglottic larynx, vallecula and the both surface, lingual as well as the laryngeal surface of epiglottis. So, any nations will again uh, present as earache. C2, C3 in the ear, external ear, which all areas? Uh, external ear is the auricle, then the lobule and the Postural skin via the greater auricular nerve and the lesser occipital nerve. Okay, remember that. Here, greater auricular and the lesser occipital nerve. And here, it is comes here. It is a, Actually, it is an interconnection between the cervical afferent with the spinal tract of trigeminal. Okay. Uh, cervical afferent with the spinal tract of trigeminal nerve. And uh, usually the muscles and the facet joint of the cervical spine, including atlanto axial joint and uh, C2, second and third. Okay, so both muscles as well as the uh, facet joints are involved. And uh, commonly it is a cervical spondylitis which is presenting as an earache. And also a muscle spasm, even a muscle spasm or any lesions on this area will present as referred ophthalmology. So I explained about the definition of referred ophthalmology. What was that? Okay, it's pain in the ear, not due to disease in the ear, but in areas having same dermatomal innervation. And the significance you have if it can be a presentation of any underlying pathology. So um, any earache after examination of ear, it found normal. You investigate all these areas thoroughly. Otherwise, you will miss a major problem. And the mechanism of action is a convergence projection theory and the individual nerves. They are the 7, 5, 10, 9 and C2 and C3.